we're now going to look at the characteristic equation for 3x3 three three square matrices. If you remember from the last video, the driving engine of how this happens is to focus on this matrix. And what's the focus is for this to have a non-trivial solution, this matrix must uh, have a determinant of zero. And again, it's all based on the uh, invertible, invertible matrix theorem. You can go back and review that. And that gives us the power to move forward and the power to solve for lambda, my eigenvalues. So I'm pick, starting with my first example. This is my A matrix, and I'm going to subtract lambda times the identity. So again, I'll show what that looks like. There's the second one. And let's subtract, giving 1 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, and just 0 minus lambda, or just negative lambda. So, so my, my original matrix minus this, this is what I just underlined up here. That's what we're going to focus on, and our job is to find the determinant of this. Um, well, we know it's determined it's going to be zero. Let's let's uh, let's go through the motions for finding it. And things are a little bit different for a three by three. There's two techniques I'm going to remind you of in this video. The first is the cofactor approach, which says look at any row or any column for an efficient way to get this. I'm going to look at row one. I like the fact that there's at least one zero, and it all begins by working with each entry. So I take one minus lambda. And I multiply that by the determinant of the submatrix that's left over. If you can imagine crossing out that row, crossing out that column. This submatrix is a two by two. And so its determinant falls back to the classic uh, multiply the diagonals and subtract. So let's show that. So I'll put negative lambda in front of four minus lambda minus negative 12. So that's the beginning of my cofactor approach. Uh, I then moved to this spot, and generally we would it would switch signs. It would be a negative of this, but zero times whatever happens next is gone anyway, so that's the power of choosing row one. So I finally get to this one, which my in my pattern of signs says plus minus plus, so it's the positive version of this location, but because that's a negative one, I'll just put negative one, and again, times the determinant of the submatrix uh, that's left over, which looks like it's 3 times 6 minus 0 times 4 minus lambda, which is convenient, which is just 0. So let's start cleaning this up. Let me leave this binomial out in front. And what do we have here? Negative 4 lambda plus lambda squared plus 12. Uh, this is just 18, so minus 1 times 18, negative 18. So it looks like we need to uh, distribute these two next, uh, ignoring the negative 18. So here comes 1 times each of those. So negative 4 lambda, lambda squared, 12. Negative lambda. Lambda squared minus lambda cubed minus 12 lambda minus 18. Putting all that together in descending order, we've got negative lambda cubed. Got it. My two square terms would give me five lambda squareds. My two lambda terms, negative four, negative 12, negative 16. And then finally, a positive 12 and negative 18 is negative 6. Remember, this is my characteristic polynomial. If you're asked for the uh, characteristic equation, you would just continue with equals 0, and then we would solve this cubic for uh, the three roots. You're not going to be asked that uh, in your online homework. It's just going to ask for the characteristic polynomial, and so that's where I'm going to stop.
And the reason is solving cubics can be a little tricky. Um, first of all, you're not guaranteed three real uh, roots. Um, there's no convenient formula for that. If you wanted to, you could throw that into a calculator and find out the x-intercepts, but for homework's sake, that's all you're going to need. Um, if you saw my first video in 5.2, around the nine minute mark, there was about a half minute pause where I wasn't saying much. And the reason was I was trying to, sh I was going to show you something on the screen, which I'm going to show you right now. When it asked for uh, the characteristic polynomial and it uses Lambda, you might be wondering how you type that in. I just want to make sure you all know on this um, list of cells, there's a, an actual Lambda button. So that's all. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, a second example. And I'll show you a second technique for determinants. So this time I'll go, we know what this is going to be. There's my lambda i, and so we are working with, now notice this is kind of, this one's kind of interesting. Um, zero minus lambda. We got this, goes on with two and four. Another zero minus lambda. And the same with the bottom corner, zero minus lambda. So uh, we're, we're often used to working with, uh, it's very common to work with binomial chunks inside this. And so that's, we got our uh, distributive game has to be on. This was kind of unique in the fact there are none, but I've got uh, things to still work with. And this is a good candidate for the second technique for determinants. You could still use the cofactor approach, but there's not a convenient row or column with zeros in it. And so it might be just as friendly to use the two column approach. Remember where you take the first two columns and you repeat them on the outside of the matrix. And then we approach this kind of like the two by two we're going to use three diagonals going down. So starting with this first one, negative lambda times itself three times is negative lambda cubed. Next, two times three times four. Oh, and these are plus signs in between. Uh, so that is 24 plus four times two times three, another 24. We then switch to diagonals going up from this bottom corner, and we also switch to minus. So 4 times negative lambda times 4 is negative 16 lambda. 3 times 3 times negative lambda, so minus negative 9. And then finally, 2 times 2 times negative lambda, negative 4 lambda. All right. So putting this all together, it looks like there's my negative lambda cubed. There's no squares, so I'll jump right to my three lambda terms. Notice they're all going to end up being positive. So 4 plus 16 plus 9, so we've got 29 lambda. And then finally, my two constants, uh, what do we have? Just 24 and 24, 48. There's our characteristic polynomial. And we're good. Hey, the last example I just thought of, um, you might be asked, for instance, um, if you saw something like this, finally. Don't forget, I mentioned in some previous videos, you've got a lower triangular matrix, meaning find the diagonal and there's complete zeros above or below. You've got a triangular matrix. The eigenvalues are easy to spot. You don't need to fight for them. Um, it turns out they're just the entries along the diagonal. I just want to let you know um, in this example, you would enter negative 6, positive 5, 3. You might ask, should I enter the 5 a second time? For your online homework, you should. That's called multiplicity, and it kind of matters. It turns out there are just three distinct eigenvalues, but it, it, it is interesting that 5 has multiplicity too.
For your online homework, just enter it twice and you'll be good.